As is obvious, we have members who decided they wanted to hijack our process today. It is my belief and your belief that no member of this chamber has the opportunity to shut down our process, to shut down a job that members, that people of the public and the people of Florida have asked us to do. Chaos on the floor of the Florida House during redistricting. The special session ends amid protests from black Democratic lawmakers over the new map passed into congressional districts. Good afternoon, folks. I'm Evan Donovan, political anchor here at WFLA News Channel 8. An unprecedented day on the Florida House. Hard to really couch what actually happened this afternoon. Uh, a, a, a massive protest among black do- Democratic lawmakers. You can see them sitting in the in the central part of the floor there in front of the rostrum uh, as the redistricting bills were being considered by the Florida House this morning. And a quick recap, they passed the Florida Senate yesterday along with those two bills dealing with Disney and their special district status in the Reedy Creek Improvement District as well as, well as several others that were established before the Florida Constitution was enacted in 1968. Those bills targeting Disney, uh, as well as the redistricting bills, passed the Florida Senate yesterday. They were due to be taken up by the House today for debate uh, and then, of course, a vote on all three of those elements. They started with redistricting, Senate Bill 2C, as you see here, and it quickly devolved into chaos. A protest from black Democratic lawmakers who began screaming and chanting on the House floor. Of course, we'll get into the the reasons why in a little bit, but just to give you the quick update, the governor is the one who proposed the map for this special session on redistricting. Typically, that job is done by lawmakers, and they did that job during the regular session, passing a map that was similar to the one that currently exists, For example, keeping North Florida Congressional District 5 in place, which technically is and looks like a racial gerrymander uh, going from Tallahassee all the way to Jacksonville, a 200 mile stretch of district uh, that links black voters in that community so that they could elect a candidate of their choice who happens to be Congressman Al Lawson. But the governor's map dismantles that district and also splits Jacksonville in half, which would dilute the vote of minority voters in that area and possibly lead to two Republicans being uh, elected in that spot instead of one Democrat and one Republican, especially when one of those Republicans is black. And during redistricting, there are a lot of rules about diluting minority votes. Let me show you what happened. As Representative Hinson was arguing on the House floor earlier this morning, and it descended into chaos. We are abdicating our constitutional responsibility and subverting the power to him. He further complains that this inclination to spend Representative other Hinson, the time has expired in debate. Rep- Representative Hinson, the time has expired. Members, this is not. We need a formal recess. We are in formal recess. Sergeant, please secure the chamber. You can see happening there the beginning of that protest. We want to continue to show you what happened after that. That began a recess. You could hear them go into recess at that point once the protest began. And then about an hour later, uh, Republicans came back into the chamber. You're looking at Chris Sprouse, who is the Speaker of the Florida House there from uh, the Pinellas County area. Uh, He then came back into the House with the rest of the members uh, on the Republican side, and they began to resume business, but the protests did not end. We are back in session. As is obvious, we have members who decided they wanted to hijack our process today. It is my belief and your belief that no member of this chamber has the opportunity to shut down our process, to shut down a job that members, that people of the public and the people of Florida have asked us to do. We will be concluding our business today. It is my hope that our colleagues would join us in not being disruptive, but we will be finishing our business. 
It is my understanding that Leader Grant is gonna, has yielded back the balance of his time, which is the final debate block of this bill, and that Chairman Leak, Chairman Leak, you're recognized on your close. Chairman Leak, having waived close, the question now recurs on final passage of Senate Bill 2C. The clerk will unlock the machine and members will proceed to vote. Clerk will lock the machine, now it's a vote. 68 yeas, 38 nays, Mr. Speaker. Show the bill passes. I will entertain a motion to call the previous question, and we will vote on these two bills. It is my hope that we will be able to proceed civilly and with decorum and with respect for one another. Read the next bill. By Senator Bradley, Senate Bill 4C, a bill to be entitled an act relating to independent special districts. Representative Fine, you're recognized to explain your bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It seems as Mickey and many have joined us in the chamber today. That said, this is the bill that we discussed yesterday. Members, we will either go into structured debate or we will call the previous question. Representative Renner, you're recognized for a motion. Here, Mr. Speaker, I move the previous question on the bill. Representative Renner moves the previous question on the bill. This motion is not debatable and requires a majority vote. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Show the bill, show it, motion passes. We will now proceed to call the previous question. The, 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 the clerk will unlock the machine and members will proceed to vote on Senate Bill 4C. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Clerk will lock the machine, now it's a vote. 70 yeas, 38 nays, Mr. Show Speaker. the bill passes. Read the next bill. By Senator Bradley, Senate Bill 6C, a bill to be entitled an act relating to social media platforms. Representative Andrade, you recognize to explain your bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is the bill repealing the carve out that every Democrat voted to oppose last year. Members, we will either proceed to debate or we will entertain a motion to call the previous question. Representative Renner, you recognize for a motion. Mr. Speaker, I move the previous question on the bill. Representative Renner moves the previous question on the bill. This motion is not debatable. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. The motion passes. Members, the question now recurs on final passage of Senate Bill 6C. Clerk will unlock the machine. Members will proceed to vote. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Clerk will lock the machine. Now it's a vote. 70 yeas, 38 nays, Mr. Speaker. Show the bill passes. <laughs> Read the next bill. Not on the desk, Mr. Speaker. Are the bills on the special order calendar? Not on the desk, Mr. Are there Speaker. resolutions on the desk? Not on the desk, Mr. Speaker. Representative Brown, are you recognized for a motion? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House adjourn to reconvene upon the call of the chair. Representative Cheddar moves to adjourn the House to reconvene upon call of the chair. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Show the House is adjourned. And there you have it. The end of the protests, the end of the special session, the new redistricting maps are in place. And so is a new era, it seems, in Florida politics. Uh, that was a, a very interesting day and certainly unprecedented in modern history. There were obviously a lot of issues with the last redistricting process, and there has been a lot of concern throughout this one from Democrats, but they have no power to stop this process. And so this was them exercising what power they uh, tried to have today on the floor of the Florida House. I have reluctantly not introduced my digital anchor here, J.B. Buno, on the left side of your screen. I'm sorry, J.B. Uh, it's, it's all right, Evan. It's, uh, a busy 
busy afternoon. It, it's, it's just a Thursday in Florida politics, JB. Oh, just a Thursday in Florida politics. Yeah, uh, but yeah chaos in, in Tallahassee. I want to say hi to all of you joining us on the WFLA Facebook page, also on the WFLA JB Facebook page. Hello to everybody watching, or wherever you're watching from. I think that a lot of folks in the comments section, Evan, originally thought that we were going to be spending a lot of time talking about Disney. Anytime that Disney is mentioned in a Facebook post, people have an opinion of some kind. Sure. But today, Disney... Yeah, taking a bit of a back seat because really the big headline out of Tallahassee is the fallout of uh, what is going on with redistricting. So we'll, of course, we're going to be talking about both. We're going to be talking sure. about uh, redistricting and why this is such a big deal here in the state of Florida, why the maps are the way that they are. But we're also going to be talking a little bit about Disney. So for the reason that you're here, stick around. We've got a lot to talk about, but we are going to be paying attention to some of the comments in the Facebook Live comment section. In fact, why don't we just feature yeah, I was a couple? Say anything, let's go right to it. Use any of the hashtags on the red stripes on your screen. Hashtag Hey Evan on the right side of your screen. Hashtag Hey JB on the left, and we can feature your comment. We've got two on opposing sides here. We've got the first one coming in from David, and uh, and let's get David's comment loaded up here on screen. Um, it'll take just a second to launch our. Sure. Our, uh, our graphic system. There it is. All right, so let's get David's comment loaded in. Oh, okay, it's not loading up. Let's not try one more up. time. David, we're going to try one more time. Oh, okay, it's not there. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why. Let me... Okay. All right, well, David says, hashtag AJB and Evan. He says, biggest abuse of power in Florida history. That's his comment. And then we had a comment from Jay Warrington in our Facebook Live comment section saying... Hashtag AJB, thank God that we have a great governor. So um, opposing views, and that's uh, not, nothing out of the norm here in the state of Florida when you have, of course, the two uh, separate parties making sure their voices are heard in our comment section. But uh, Evan, we'll keep an eye on our comment section for those hashtag-based questions and comments. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about um, why they were upset. Actually, you know what, JB? I was, I was kind of making this map here uh, on the side. I can queue it up here for you. I know we can talk about the Tampa Bay area right now, but obviously those lawmakers are from the Jacksonville area, and that was the genesis of a lot of the opposition to the governor's map. So I was trying to get you a little a little cross-dissolve VO of what's going on. Here, look on your screen here, Evan. Since that's where those lawmakers are from. Um yeah, in fact, why don't I just do this? If I if I get you this VO, would you be able to get it in? Sure. Okay. Do it um, on the fly. Yeah. So I'll do. Let me talk. Let me get you this, and then I'll talk about uh, the local maps in the meantime. But here's here's a two minute loop uh, coming out for you. You can put in X files. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, folks, l let's let's show the the VO that we do have, which you see in the center of your screen right there. So just let me know when to play it, and I'll let it. Yeah, well, let me set it up first before we do. So, again, let's talk about this is the vegetable portion of your digital stream today, folks. This is the reason why uh, those folks were upset. The governor is responsible for either approving or vetoing the map of congressional districts only that the lawmakers come up with. After they passed a map, uh, which largely you know, kept most districts similar but not exactly the same, uh, the governor vetoed that and said that he wanted something that looked more like his own map, something that he said was race neutral. Democrats, of course, said that his map was anything but. Uh, when he introduced his map, what it did in a number of key areas, including in Pinellas County, was split areas of likely Democratic voters, which redistricting experts say will dilute the impact of those voters because, obviously, if they're not all in one district, <clears throat> then they will have less of an impact on the two districts in which they are split. That is what people who do redistricting call uh, a strategy uh, called cracking. Uh, there's also another strategy called packing where, uh, and, and by the way, this is not a partisan thing, of course, like Republicans do it in Florida, but you know, Democrats do it in California and New York. The other, the other thing they do is packing, where you put you know, uh, voters who are of the other party, as many of them into one district as you can, so they won't have much of an impact on the other districts around them. Those are some of the strategies, and here's an example of how that works. So as you can see here, and JB, you can start the video now, District 13 is covering all of Pinellas County. You can see where the line is drawn in the middle there is in the middle of the bay. 14 is all of Tampa. Now that, if you can pause it right there, JB, that is the governor's map. So you can see, oh, 
We can't pause it. Hold on. So I that, got it for you. Yeah, that's the, that is how it looks now. This is the way the governor's map. And you can see what happens to 13. The governor's map cuts it St. Petersburg right down the middle and puts that eastern side of St. Petersburg, which contains more Democratic voters and more black voters, into District 14, crossing over the bay and putting them in. Now, Democrats say that's not constitutional. Uh, they believe that's already been uh, been handled in the courts. The governor obviously has a different argument. He is making a bit of a complex legal argument. Remember, he's a Harvard-trained lawyer. Uh, he thinks that the U.S. Constitution's requirements in the 4th and 14th Amendment, as well as the Voting Rights Act, are in opposition to the Fair Districting Amendment that Florida voters put into our Constitution about 10, 12 years ago. He thinks if you were to challenge them both in court, one, that the Florida Constitution can't stand up compared to the U.S. Constitution, first of all, federal law trumps state law, of course, uh, but then he thinks that part of that, that Fair Districts Amendment would be struck down. So there's a bit of a hesitancy on the side of Democrats to, to challenge these laws in court, the, this map in court. I'm sure it's going to be done. Uh, there, there are going to be people, be people that challenge it. But the Fair Districts Amendment, in addition to the, the U.S. Constitution making a number of rules about how you can make districts with black voters in them, the Fair Districts Amendment in the Florida Constitution says you also can't draw the maps for a partisan advantage. And the governor's map definitely does that. Currently, well, in the last election cycle, uh, there were 14 Republicans out of uh, Florida's 27 congressional representatives. 14 Republicans, 13 Democrats. After this past, uh, this past election, there are now 16 Republicans and 11 Democrats. We're now getting an extra congressional member because of the growth in population in Florida over the last 10 years. So it's now going to be 28, and the governor's map jumps that partisan advantage in the way the districts are drawn, making it 20 Republican-leaning districts compared to just 11 on the Democratic side. Again, that may not hold up against legal scrutiny. That is an issue of partisan advantage, which, of course, Democrats were upset about. But it was more the issue... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I never... Exported this for you, JB. It okay. was more the issue of uh, of the racial impact of the governor's vote, uh, map, which split districts with minority voters. That is what caused mostly today's protests. <clears throat> so again, that's kind of the strategy that's going on here. Those are the legal arguments against the governor's map. It is novel, as Speaker Chris Sproul said, and certainly will be adjudicated in the court system, both federally and within the state system. And yesterday you saw lawmakers in the Senate specify which district of state court any challenges to the map could be in. That was an amendment to the bill. They also allocated a million dollars to fight those legal battles because they know they're coming. And what this equates to is holding all the chips at the poker table, right? I mean, we're talking about Republicans really, you know, in increasing their, their hold on the state and being able to, um, for this state to, to be able to occur. Of course, that's that's... Yeah, and that's, that's not and that's, surprising. None look, of this is surprising. No, it's not. And, and again, it's not partisan here. It hap Republicans are doing it here. Democrats do it in states they control. So this is not. I'm not being biased when I tell you all about this. This is just how people do it. Which is why, so when when you have partisans do it, that's why some states have tried to de partisan the process, and I think I just made that word up, uh, they basically have tried to take as much politics out of it as possible. Keep communities together, keep districts close to each other. I mean, those are general principles of redistricting. But obviously, when partisans get in there and do it, they're looking for partisan advantages. That's what politicians do. So, Miriam Webster says deep partisan, not a word, but you know what? We can add it today. <laughs> Probably not. We can add uh, it today. But yeah. But I, so I think that's eventually, uh, or that, that's actually what's happening there is that there, there are people who are trying to make a partisan process out of it. And of course, you know, if you're just a regular voter, uh, most people want to just see it, you know, be as nonpartisan as possible. But uh, that's not the way it works. That's okay. why some states have tried to adopt, you know, special magistrates to do it or they elect boards to do it or, you know, they have special ways that they do redistricting. But, um, you know, it's it's complicated. Um, let's I, I want to bring in some of the comments from the double. Hello to everybody joining us on the WFLA JB Facebook page, by the way. We're live on a couple of different spots. Um, but let's and Albert, we're going to come back to your question. And I also know Evan wants to show a little bit more, do a little more show and tell here with sure. you live on stream. But Marva Cray on the WFLA JB Facebook page saying, hey, JB, uh, isn't this illegal? Can it be appealed? Now, I, I'm, I, I'm, this comment came in while we were talking about redistricting. 
So I'm going to just kind of assume that this is a question based on redistricting. Yeah. Um, Evan, you're, you're the best oh, person. Me, in other words, or, or she could have been talking about. Yeah, no, I don't think she was talking about the floor protest, right? Because she's talking about whether it can be appealed. Oh, could, could, well. Then it wouldn't no, be appealed. Yeah, yeah appealed. No, no, no. So she's talking so, about the maps. The maps. Yeah. Right. So Marva, um, with regard to the maps, yes. Um, yes, it can be appealed or yes, it can be challenged in court before it can be appealed. Um, whether it's illegal, you know, that's going to be up to a judge to decide. Multiple judges, I'm sure, because this will this will get a ruling on a lower court, then it will move its way up through the court system. I will expect I expect that to happen on both the, the federal court side and on the state court side. So you're going to eventually have the Florida Supreme Court as the authority on one of those uh, lawsuits, the U.S. Supreme Court on the other lawsuit, and then, of course, in the state lawsuit, usually if you get a ruling from the Florida Supreme Court, you could possibly appeal it to the U.S. Supreme Court, arguing that your U.S. constitutional rights were violated. So either way you do this, it's going to go through a lot of court proceedings. And so the answer to your question, isn't this illegal? We won't know that for years, probably. And, and that's and that, the thing that, here. So is, that, that brings up my question. Timeline-wise, right. these maps go into effect when? Right away. Because and that's the and that's that's the issue is that the maps will go into place right away and with implications in November. Yeah, but you you think November, right? But it's a lot earlier than that. Supervisors of election, including right here in Polk County, were saying recently, as recently as two weeks ago, they needed these maps by the end of the month because they have a lot of stuff to do. They got to draw up the districts. They got to make sure that you know they're they're contiguous. Your polling place is actually in whatever the new district is, right? They got to they have yeah. to do all that minutia, which is an incredible task. I, and I don't think people understand how oh. much year round work goes into pulling off elections they are and we are really They're, lucky in the bay area we have some spectacular supervisors of yeah. elections on both sides of the aisle these guys are uh, and women are not are not partisan they're you know they, they do their jobs they're really excellent at the at it and they're really good about explaining how they do their jobs craig latimer shout out to him uh and everybody else in this area uh, so they need maps by the end of the month so that they can begin doing their work. You've then got candidate qualifying in June, you got a primary in August, and you got the midterms in November. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Yeah, so whatever challenges come to this, unless a court challenge goes in and the judge says, I think this is a really gerrymandered map, I'm gonna put an immediate hold on it, and you have to conduct your elections based on the existing maps from last redistricting session, I, you know, that may not even be an option. It's going to depend on what happens in court. But more than likely, this will be the map that is in place for these midterms. And whether it is illegal or not will be determined years from now. All right. You want to move on to Disney or do you want to talk about the maps in Jacksonville in the northeastern quadrant of the Just state? Just real quick. Let's talk about it real quick. Talk yeah. about what? You got the real video? Quick? Yeah. What? The, the video? You got it ready? The one that you were, you were sending me? Yeah. I don't have it yet. No? No. I didn't put it in the right place, probably. <laughs> That's probably what I did. We're going to um, send a file from his computer yeah, to my give, computer. Give us a second here, Through folks. cyberspace. Um, and it's going to magically appear nope. on your screen. Welcome to the in, magic uh, of live streaming. Okay, I'm going to send it to you. Putting it in X files right. You, can you get there, though? You can't Hell get yeah. There. You can get there. Okay. Yep. Okay, it's in. Okay. It'll take me now just a moment. Yes, there okay. it is. I see it. Let's load this into our system. And so, the, so the lawmakers that you saw on the floor earlier that were doing those protests, they are primarily from the Jacksonville area. Representative Angie Nixon is from Jacksonville. Uh, she was joined, obviously, by members of the Black Democratic Caucus. For those of you who are watching from here in Tampa Bay, where we're located, you will recognize probably uh, Representative Fentress Driscoll. I saw in there, there you saw Representative Anna Escamani from the Orlando area uh, on, the, on the Democratic side of the aisle. So, so, yeah, let's take a look at this. And I looped this for two minutes, JB. So... Those reps from the Jacksonville area, this was the district that was particularly offensive, supposedly, uh, not supposedly, but particularly offensive to, uh, to black Democrats because they believe that this is a classic example of cracking a district to dilute minority impact. And this looks, uh, really quickly, this, this yellow and pink kind of looks like the Florida Peninsula. It's not. In fact, let me just bring Evan up yeah, on, it's Jacksonville. on here full screen. Yeah, you guys can see there this is the Jacksonville right. area, and it looks like... Does that look like it's? It looks like it's getting split almost right down, almost the middle. right down the middle. Yep. Right. So you get so it carves out, and you can see how the the map goes like this, you know, and is really like jiggered. That that 
jiggering around houses and buildings and certain roads, they know with exact precision where their voters are located. Again, that's not a waterway. Become, that that jig, j- jigsaw and going no, on there. That's not a river or something. I mean, that, that is the way the line is drawn to maximize the impact uh, of, of the way you want the map to look. And again, I'm, I'm not being biased here. That is what partisans do. It's happening by Republicans in Florida. It happens with Democrats in blue states. That's just the way they do it. So that's the way DeSantis's map looks. If you, if you play the video, you'll show the way the current map looks, and you can see the difference. So this right now is so this DeSantis' is the way map. The and then- new map is. That is the existing map. And you can see four is the district in yellow. Oh, oh, it, I, I fro- froze it right on the transition point here. Hold on. Let's go back. Again, that's the... That's the governor's map. This is the map that just passed. This Pause. is the, the previous map. So this yeah. is the map that was in place before this redistricting. And you can see four is the yellow district. Five is the pink one, purplish one, that stretches from Jacksonville all the way over to Tallahassee. Now, the governor argues this is a racially gerrymandered district. And... He's probably not wrong about that. I mean, if you look at it, the way that it is, it is drawn around those communities, if that was done in a state legislative process, it might not withstand scrutiny. But that map was drawn by a court because legislators couldn't agree on the maps that they were drawing last time we had a redistricting. So a court drew that map because they became the final arbiters of what the districts should look like. If you saw the governor's map, you see that he changes it so that it splits Jacksonville down the middle. Now, you, you might argue, well, how else would you do it? The house map, which you're not looking at, uh, the house map left the, the core of Jacksonville in place as one district, which would have elected its own representative, which you know could have been the current black congressman, Al Lawson. And then the surrounding suburban areas of Jacksonville were another district that likely would have been very Republican. So the house map would have produced <clears throat> the same thing that the current map produces now. One Democrat, one Republican. The Governor DeSantis' map very clearly, because of the way that the, the, the demographics work out in four and five right there, would have been two very solid Republican seats. So, you know, that's the thing. Will it stand up to legal scrutiny? We don't know. Very interesting. And also, too, we primarily focus our attention on the Tampa Bay area. And while we've been talking a lot about Districts 13 and 14 under this proposal, that was very interesting to me for, to, to see what's going on in the northeastern part of the state. And mm-hmm. again, uh, a big reason for the uproar that we were playing back for you as we had uh, legislators or, or excuse me, uh, Florida uh, House members uh, openly protesting, staging a protest there. Um, in response to this redistricting plan that is, of course, um, getting a lot of attention. I, I think now across the country, too, I've been getting push alerts from some national news outlets. Oh, I'm sure you'll um, see it on the national it's news. Gonna, yeah, this is going to be a massive story um, in the days ahead, uh, especially for those of us here in the state of Florida. All right, let's pivot to Disney. Yep. You ready to just talk Disney? Yeah, we'll briefly Meanwhile, talk uh, amid all of this, we have the Reedy Creek District, um, no longer, Evan, is that correct? Now, that is the Disney, that is the act from 1967, correct, that enables and establishes Disney as its own self-governing district, correct? That is correct. And you, some of you might remember, uh, those of you who are, uh, are JB super fans uh, and watch JB every time he goes on the stream, we had uh, Richard Harrison, a city and state government attorney, on our stream a couple of days ago, and he talked about the legislature cannot pass a law that specifically targets anyone or anything, right? <clears throat> so they, they come up with ways to craft the laws so that it doesn't appear to target one particular thing. In this example, Disney has a special district called the Reedy Creek Improvement District, which was put into place in 1967. The following year, the Florida Constitution was enacted. This bill says that any special improvement districts, special districts, that were in place before the Florida Constitution was enacted yep, and never came back to reconstitute themselves under the rules of the, federal, of the Florida Constitution are now dissolved as of June 1st, 2023. Now, Representative Randy Fine, uh, who is n- never quiet about the way he feels, very clearly said on the House floor that, yeah, this was them going after Disney because of them speaking out against uh, House Bill 1557, the parental rights bill that some some people call it, don't say yep. gay. And I, I have a question for you when you're... Sure. Yeah. So he said on the House floor that, yeah, they were pretty much going after them. But then they also said, and I, and I, you know, you have, 
you have to understand how this might have happened. They also said when they decided to look at what was going on with Disney, they realized just how much power Disney has in this special district. And one of the things you've been hearing Republican lawmakers say all week is that Disney, as its own private company that effectively runs its own government on that land, has the power to build a nuclear power plant if they want to. And Republicans were saying all week, I don't think we would give any company that power now in today's day and age. This is clearly a relic of the past. And once we, yeah, wanted to get back at Disney and we started looking into what their special deal looks like, we thought, well, this is kind of crazy. Let's change this. And so they have put into law now that district will be dissolved as of June 1st of 2023. But as they said throughout the process this week, there is a regular legislative session as well as possibly multiple special sessions. But next year's leg regular legislative session will happen in March. And they keep saying that Disney can come back at that point along with these five other districts, which are ones you've probably never heard of uh, and are very small, and renegotiate and reconstitute their special district if they can come to some sort of agreement. Democrats decried that effort as saying, it was Republicans telling Disney, hey, if you behave, we'll let you have your special district back. Remains to be seen whether Disney would even do that. They obviously do have a lot of advantages from having their own special district. So there is a self-interest in doing that. Another argument from Republicans all week was, hey, why does Disney deserve this special district? Universal has three parks compared to Disney's four and doesn't get any of those advantages. And is that really fair? Mm -hmm. which I think is a fair argument to have. Yep. So, unfortunately, we didn't hear debate. Uh, well, we heard it in the Senate yesterday, but we didn't hear debate in the House, which, which often has more vigorous debate, as you saw today. Um, you know, the House is smaller, represents more areas, so they have more you know, ability to, to represent micro areas that feel a certain way. So yep. you tend to get more targeted debate. And that didn't happen today. Uh, because uh, because there was a, a protest, obviously, on the on the House floor, and the black Democratic lawmakers thought that that was a justi justifiable thing for them to do because of their outrage about redistricting. But caught up in the mix were the Disney bills that didn't get any debate on the floor today. Now, the question that I have, and Albert, <laughs> please be patient. We're going to get to your, your comment on, on on our screen here on, on Battleground Florida. We, friend of the program, Richard Harrison, was on uh, just the other day, mm. and he said... The chances of this happening are not. The, 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 he almost, yeah, he didn't he almost laughed. Now, what did he mean when he say the chances of this happening are, are virtually non, non-existent? I want to put words in his mouth, but in essence, that's what he said, correct? Well, is that this wasn't going to happen. Yeah, but it did. It did. And, and I think what he meant was that the district wasn't going to be dissolved. So Which in other this words, doesn't do. It or does, does do it. It does do it, but it doesn't do it for another 14 months, Right. You, they have Disney now has 14 months to come back to the Florida to lobby to lobby. So, so it's important, right? I mean, that's really what this comes well, down no, to. Well, no, it's important to understand the history here. So, so Republican lawmakers pointed out that at some point in the past, in the past, at multiple points in the past, every special district that hadn't reincorporated, renegotiated, uh, reenacted itself, uh, I'm not sure the exact verbiage there that, that's correct, but the, but the, the, the those districts that hadn't done that since the new constitution came into place were told you need to come in and talk to us about how to reconstitute your special district so you can be in compliance with the constitution. If I remember correctly, Representative Fine said that that was about a 143 or it was either 143 or 173 special districts around the state. Those special districts did come in and renegotiate their status under the constitution okay. once yep. they were asked to except for six of them. And Disney is one of the six that never did that. And I think they, that's probably because they thought, eh, we got a pretty sweet deal. Don't necessarily want to go in and, and renegotiate it. And they've always gotten special treatment in this state. And so they probably thought, well, we don't really have to. Yeah, the, yeah, the legislators are saying other special districts have to do that. But, you know, do we have to do that? I, it, I, again, I wasn't around when that happened. That was 20 years ago. But they, lawmakers point out that they asked those special districts to come in and renegotiate with the legislature about how their special district can comport with the constitution. And only those six didn't. And Disney was one of them. 
this has made headlines because you have a rising star in the GOP and Ron DeSantis n- nationally recognized now as a rising star within the GOP. You hear all of these calls, all these. Uh, we have commenters in our comment section on this live stream who have been talking about DeSantis running in 2024. Meanwhile, you have one of the most well-known, recognized, and influential brands in the world in Disney home right here in Florida. You have the leader of the state and you have perhaps the most influential company in the state now not seeing eye to eye. So I want to bring in Albert. Wait, but before we go to Albert, those are all true, except for you said the with its home here in Florida. Increasingly, Republican lawmakers, including Governor DeSantis, continue to paint Disney as a California entertainment company that ah, runs a yep. theme well, park. Well, they were in, in California Florida. first, and, and, and they did expand. And they are headquartered there, right? So, yep. so yep. it is important that because because they are they are continuing to say, look, this is a company because of their opposition to House Bill fifteen fifty seven, the, the Don't Say Gay Bill. They, they have now said, look. They're not backing, you know, parental rights then. You know, the, the, the governor's accusing them of, of you know, being a uh, w- woke company uh, and, and, you know, not supporting parental rights despite, you know, selling itself as a, as a family-oriented company. Uh, obviously, Disney would refute that. But that's, that's the way. So that's the only I just want to add some clarification there. Republican lawmakers are increasingly painting Disney as a visitor, a guest. Representative Randy Fine, who introduced the bill that took away their special district, said on the floor and said on Twitter, Disney is a guest in this state. And today we remind them of that. That's an exact quote. Uh, Yeah. So so we go to Albert's question. Disney, Disney's, uh, we know where politics and money intersect we know the relationship of course that exists between politics and between revenue and finances and how much money you have 200 plus billion dollars is the estimated worth of of disney based on just you know quick quick little search here yeah Uh, we're talking about uh, a massive international brand that has a massive presence in Central Florida. Okay, yeah, Albert, but they can't just they can't just pick up Disney World and move it. No, you can't. It? It's so, not like other companies where right. other companies when they face you know when they face resistance from that state's legislature, they'll just say, "Hey, we'll take our warehouse right. and manufacture our goods or services, or we'll, we're going to do work in this state." Right. Or some companies will say, "You know what? We're going to go to Asia and sure. manufacture stuff there." You can't do that with Disney because Disney World is. You can't, like you just said, you just can't yeah, pick it up and move at it. it. You can't pick up the Millennium Falcon and move it. No, so now well, to Albert Perkins' question, how likely do you think it is that Disney will file a lawsuit against the state of Florida regarding the redistricting? Just a quick clarification there. It, it, the Disney bills were not about redistricting. Right. They were about the special district. Redistricting is, is for voting, congressional maps. How likely do I think Disney will file a lawsuit? Probably pretty likely. I, it depends how they want to play this. I, look, they could they could try to play nice and come in and say... Hey, look, let's all calm down a little here. Let's just take the temperature down, <laughs> Medi- make sure we well, understand. A mediator, a mediator, if, if you there's will. There's a lot of money on, on the line here, which there is. Let's talk this over. You know, Don't forget, Disney donates a lot of money okay. to these politicians, yep. and they're going to want that, that cash cow to keep coming. Including, so. re- I mean, Republicans, right? Didn't de- uh, Oh, there- way more to Republicans than Democrats right. because they yep. run the state. So, I mean, that right. makes sense if you're a company. Yep. You, you know. But the point is I, they could come in and say, okay, you know, Let's let's make sure we do this so that everybody wins, or they could take the posture of, you know what, Randy Fine, the representative who introduced the bill, basically admitted on the floor that this was targeted at us. They could use those words in a lawsuit against the state to say they were singled out by this law, and again, as as Richard Harrison told you the other day, and he's a Republican by the way, um, that that that's not legal. You can't pass laws that target you know one company. So. Um, It'd be interesting to see uh, what happens there. But yes, could could they file or do I think it's likely? Uh, yeah, it depends on how they want to play it, Albert. Yeah, and I, I, we have a, a link. Uh, digital content producer Heather Monahan just sent this our way. And I want to bring up uh, Mary Ann's comment here. By Hashtag the way, I do have to go do my job. At some I, point yeah, too. I know. Uh, but isn't Disney also moving some of their operations from California to Florida? And right now on WFLA.com. Uh, uh, the Walt Disney Company saying it plans to build a new regional campus in Central Florida to house at least 2,000 professional employees who will be re- relocating from Southern California to Florida to work in the digital technology, finance, and product development space Maybe. in our state. Right. Maybe. So, so now 
This rocky relationship. Yeah, Marianne, between, I would not count on that happening. Between Republican leadership and Disney in Florida now forces some very, very difficult questions that have to be asked. And as you said, when is somebody going to come in and say, all right, these, a lot of money at stake here. As you just said, it's time to play nice. How do we... How do we put the state first and all the people that rely on Disney to pay their bills? How do we do right by them and by really the biggest industry in Florida, which is which is tourism yeah. and bringing people to our state? Um, you do have to go do your job. We have a lot more on that story. Mm. This story, redistricting all of Evan's reporting. It's on WFLA.com, the WFLA app real quick. Cam Miller in our comment section. Hashtag HJB. I have a birthday tomorrow. Cam, happy birthday to you. Nice. Maybe you could go to Disney to celebrate <laughs> your birthday, Cam, and uh, enjoy Magic Kingdom. Uh, to our entire audience, uh, Evan's going to be on News Fun Channel fact, 8 JB. at 6 o'clock tonight. Oh, sorry, Check him out. Ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> No, I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm we're, we're promoting each other. I'm telling you, everybody that you can watch Evan tonight at six o'clock. Yeah, and we'll have more on the Disney story as well. Jeff Patterson's on it. Was there anything else you, you wanted to That's add? It. All right, folks, Evan Donovan, JB Buno here on Battleground Florida, a bit of an extended edition. Eat your broccoli, folks. It's on WFLA.com, the WFLA app, all of Evan Donovan's reporting on redistricting.